here we are. Winners round two. S Wald versus Raincaster. Raincaster versus S Wald. Uh, Raincaster starting with the uh, Squirtle. So he does feel comfortable all the way with the light here out of the Pokemon Trainer setup. And S Wald going with his uh, well known core in here. We're already over to the Charizard for Raincaster. But that Flare Blitz laying some good damage. And of course, we're playing here on Mementos, the brand new stage from Persona 5. And with Hazards off, it is a really nice setup. It's got an asymmetrical main platform with two of your three standard Battlefield uh, triple plats. Oh, and s -Wall just picking up so much damage, and there we go, Raincaster able to finish it off. Goes back to the Squirtle, he's going for that combination damage, he's not worried about getting knocked around, it seems, at this decently high percentage for such a light character. And there he goes over into the Ivasaur, right around that 40%, that's the rule. 0 to 40, 40 to 100. Oh, and able to land some good damage there. One or two more like that. Hey, he doesn't even wait. Eight, getting close to 80 is good enough for him. That one hit from Ivysaur, and he's already onto the Charizard, especially being over 100% himself. Like one that safety. Commentator. You could get in, sir. I've been working on it. <laughs> sort so, of. So we have Eswald here. Uh, two stock apiece. He was able to get that first stock off of Raincaster, and who's back now on the Squirtle, just racking up that damage. Up to 84%. He's onto Ivysaur, where he has some kill potential, actually. I feel that I, if s plays this right, I, never mind. <laughs> Anything I said has just gone out the window. Yeah, absolutely. Raincaster moving straight over into the Charizard. I, I don't know if he's trying to get back to the Squirtle. There it is, sure enough. Uh, he just waited a little too long after securing the kill to start his switches so he could get both off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know. I know s is a player, and he is very good. So I'd be shocked if I... This like kind of I guess disadvantage continues. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, game one here, he's not, not feeling great in this matchup right now. I would assume we're gonna see him move over to Robin if he does end up losing game one. Yeah, uh, probably. Those are his two go-to characters for sure. Yeah, oh, and there we go. Cool. That dirty, dirty yeah. hitbox when you're not even it's over the top. Problem of it. There we go. Game one going over to Raincaster. It is. It is very much the uh, problem solver here. Uh, so basically what Eswald was talking about is I uh, talking about how he heard that like he heard that uh, Corrin had been up, like buffed, I guess. Yes, yes. Sorry, I need like she got some small adjustments. Small? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I but I feel like that might have been a poor decision against Pokemon Trainer, because Pokemon Trainer is, uh, in case you guys haven't noticed at home, very good. Uh, here we go. Oh, he's switching over to Marth, even. Oh, that's that's a strange pick. He's going real hard here. I was playing with him last night, actually. He's playing some Marth. He played some Samus. Those are ones he used to play back in the day quite a bit. Really? I don't think I've ever seen him. Before. Just down to it. Just get rid of it. I think you can. Thank you. Yes. Gotta do that really fast. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Estwald for the stream. <laughs> it's all good all here. Right, so we're in the game two, and Estwald switching over to that Marth once again. So it's gonna be interesting. Decent I, start with the over special. The Marth pick over the Lucina picks a little strange because like I've just kind of figured out that Marth really doesn't stack up to Lucina as well. No, I mean, obviously, if you have your spacing correct where you're getting tips all the time, Marth would be the favored. But the chances of you actually getting all of that generally doesn't outweigh the disadvantage. Yeah, especially since I I read somewhere that the like disadvantage between non-tippers, regular tipper, and Lucina's like, moves are like very close to each other now. Oh, man. So, uh, Lucina's basically just casual Marf and use her instead. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Raincaster able to get all the way back around to Squirtle. That's an interesting choice. I 
because now, okay. I, was about I to thought say, he would want the Ivysaur, especially with S. Wall being at 94%, but yeah. there we go. S he was playing a very dangerous game. Ooh. That throw, not quite enough. S. Wall gets gimped. He will not make oh, it back. That though. hurts. That, that hurts. That was a really nice gift there from Raincaster to secure that one. But at 100%, he's not safe uh, right now. 100% Squirtle might not be a good choice. Yeah, he's looking for damage. He wants to get the combos in on the low percentage opponent. Yeah, so but he's he risking it for the biscuit here. Yeah. Like, what F smash is that? Like, that's it. Oh, the forward smash does miss there. Gets the tilt. Oh, and we're back to the Ivysaur. Nice standing uh, one, two. Oh, good hit there at 157. Uh, oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. He's able to get himself out of that air juggle. Ooh, Ooh that was that a one. very close up smash. 157, this Ivysaur. He's smoking. He's close to going out, but. Ooh, oh, rack up the damage. He actually gets the stop. Oh, that was a really good read. Oh, as well, he was so in control early on in first stock, but second stock just yeah. did not go his way at all. I would have forwarded there. I feel like pretty much anything would do it at this point, even up throw. But he can't get in close enough to do it. Ah, that would have been perfect. And there we go. He's got that Charizard out uh -oh. at 64. He's and he's got lives Ooh! to play with. That was high. Even Sorry. with the lives to play with, he just gets the spike it's straight up. Brancaster uh, looking really good in the 2-0 over Eswald here. Yeah.